booktube we are here today to correct a grave mistake and that is that i hadn't read the curse of chalian by lois mcmaster bejol this was easily my most recommended book over many years across different fantasy forums and i was wrong clearly i i absolutely loved this book and i should have read it sooner so i am correcting that mistake and imploring you that if you even have the slightest inkling that you might enjoy this, go pick it up this year. So let's talk about what this book is about. So The Curse of Chalion follows an older protagonist. So this man, Kazaril, who is a soldier that was enslaved and now is somewhat broken and returning from having gotten out of that enslavement and he is trying to find his way to the house where he f he found his way growing up um, as a soldier and he doesn't know if he will still be accepted there um, if he has a place and when he shows up he is welcomed and treated with respect that he hasn't had in a very long time so so very early on i think toward the end of the second chapter um, we literally see him just break down out of that finally having a place to rest, a place where he has something to hold on to because he literally hasn't had anything but the clothes on his back and has been just so destroyed as a person. So he's a very unique character because of the fact that he's been through these really difficult experiences and the fact that he is an older character. Um, he, he is 35, but people are constantly telling him that he looks a lot older. <laughs> so uh, he, he comes from a perspective of being very traveled and worldly and is misjudged a lot for the things that he knows or doesn't know. And getting into this plot, once he heads into this, this house, um, they kind of take him in under under their care and in order to do that they find a job for him and the job they come up with is that because he's kind of worldly and knows a lot he's going to be the tutor for the young heiress of the family and quickly after that happens he is sent away with her to court and so from there that's where things really really kick in because this is a massive novel of intrigues and court politics, very subtle, subtle dramas between people. Uh, so it's the kind of thing where people are smiling and hiding a dagger behind their back, you know, that, that sort of thing. So I think I mentioned this in my initial um, weekly review, that this would be a great one for if you really like the Varys and Littlefinger parts of Song of Ice and Fire. It's got a lot of that underhanded sneaky politics that what's going on under the surface is what's really important about what's happening so i think that's the main plot is really these interpersonal and courtly conflicts this is a major fantasy of manners but then we also have this world of five gods that this is set in um, so there are many books in this um, world of five gods setting that are all kind of interconnected they're not necessarily direct sequels as far as i know this is the first one i've read though and those five gods they're not they're not personified at least not in this novel uh but they're the mother the father the son the daughter and the bastard those are stand-ins for the the four seasons and then the bastard is somewhat of a chaotic god and I didn't really get a full sense of their connectedness to the world. They seem to typify certain qualities, but they are very connected to people's death and uh, souls leaving the earth with death is something that these gods are, are very important for. So that comes into play quite a bit. And there is death magic throughout this story. So you're exposed to it slightly at the beginning and then it comes back uh, later on as well as the, the titular curse. Something happens, and that, that something happening would be a spoiler, but what I don't think is a spoiler is that the result of that something happening is that he starts to see auras. And his starting to see these auras is what 
makes him kind of start pulling the thread of information that leads him to this curse. And so he finds out that there is this big curse over the kingdom and uh, begins realizing what a major issue it is for literally everyone that he's connected to. And so him being the honor bound and duty bound soldier that he is, um, he starts kind of having to do what he thinks is right and trying to, out of his sense of duty, resolve this curse even though it's so far beyond him um, while trying to avoid being stabbed in the back by everyone at court that is trying to uh, go against him. So, so really great, great stuff. I absolutely loved that aspect of it. Uh, as well, the world building was just fantastic. As I said, the, these five gods are great. The layers of the different levels of the court were great um, and kind of the class politics to this. The prose was wonderful as well. I think the author is known for the quality of writing quite often and the the dialogue. So the dialogue, I, I have an example to, to read in terms of um, the dialogue being very sharp and um, in many places, and I've got a couple examples of this as well, in many places including this example of dialogue, it is very funny. Uh, so overall the book is quite serious, um, it's really heavy and there are some, some incredibly dark moments, but there are really funny, funny lines in here. So um, looking at the dialogue here, um, we have two men talking about um, love and, and being in love with a woman. I could not write a poem to all of her just yet. I tried, too overwhelming. Well, if you must scribble poems to her body parts, pick lips. Lips are more romantic than noses. Why, asked Kazaril, isn't every part of her in amazement? Yes, but we kiss lips. We don't kiss noses, normally. Men write poems to the objects of our desire in order to lure them closer. How practical. In that case, you'd think men would write more poems to ladies' private parts. The ladies would hit us. Lips are a safe compromise, being as it were a stand-in or stepping stone to the greater mysteries. Ha! Anyway, I desire all of her, nose and lips and feet and all the parts between, and her soul, without which her mere body would be all still and cold and clay-like and start to rot and be not an object of desire at all. Ah, my friend, you do not understand romance. <laughs> so, so just you you can really imagine being there and being part of the this dynamic conversation between them and they're so relatable really even though they don't talk in a casual way like like we would necessarily um you you can attach to what they're saying really easily so i enjoy that as well as um this other quote that i marked is early on when kazril is learning that he's going to be heading to court with um, this this heiress. <clears throat> Should he list himself as item one in the bridal inventory? He pictured the entry. Secretary Tudor, one each. Gift from Grandmama. Age 35. Badly damaged in shipping. Value? Question mark. <laughs> so that is a very true to visual sense of humor though. Um, and as I was saying, in this one it's very heavy, very dark. I would say if you are someone who enjoys that sense of humor and wants even more, um, I would point you to The Warrior's Apprentice. Uh, this one is actually the second in the Vorkosigan saga, and this book is so funny start to finish. Um, you can actually start here because the first book follows a different character at a different time. This one follows Miles Vorkosigan, and he is kind of a uh, son of a royal family, the Varkosigans, and uh, he is disabled, but he's determined to become a soldier, and his disability prevents him from passing the test to get in. So that's what happens right at the beginning. He kind of takes off after that and uh, bluffs his way into becoming a mercenary captain um, and leads this band of mercenaries. And because we are in his head, we can see that he's lying through his teeth and completely in over his head. He has no idea what he's doing. So this one is really hilarious. So if you do love that sense of humor, definitely check this one out as well. So all around, I really enjoyed this novel. Um, I, I 
waited way too long to get into it. This had just perfect prose and characters that are rich and really well built. Uh, we had a world that had so many interesting elements, kind of low fantasy, but what was there was very intriguing and I want to learn more about these gods and magic that's in this world. Uh, the politics, the, the low courtly politics of this world were subtle and so much backstabbing. Uh, the, the conflicts and interpersonal relationships were great. So if you're looking for a really character focused and well fleshed out fantasy, fantasy of manners, low fantasy, um, anything courtly drama, I would heartily recommend this series to you. Don't sleep on it like I did. Thanks so much for watching.